wouldn't it be great if we had a way to label our ancestors on our ancestry member trees so that we can find people that have common traits quickly or jump to a specific research task that we're trying to accomplish and work on? Well, Ancestry.com has released my tree tags to help us do just that. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you put the fun back into family history by helping you understand your genetic genealogy, learn the basics of climbing your family tree, and then write the stories when you're done. I've written a blog post called Your Ancestor is Not a Flower or a Tree. And the point of that blog post is to try to get people to stop using creative hacks to decorate their family tree. Graphics like these of a ship, a seal from a state, or DNA matched proliferate through the pictures and photo hints on Ancestry. Now, some of you say, well, what's the big idea? It's my tree. I can do whatever you want. I want. Well, yes and no. What you do on your tree on Ancestry.com negatively impacts the resources that the platform uses for all of its members. So why don't we start using some better practices to decorate your tree, but also to ensure you're getting all of the hints, which means you're getting your full money's worth out of the platform. Some other things that people are doing to creatively decorate their tree is to add nonsensical acronyms and, and short and abbreviated term. These cannot be searched. And when you put them into the first name, the middle name, or the surname field, it really does create problems on Ancestry for your searches as well as when you're trying to collaborate with others. So if you're going to use terms like this, instead of my tree tags, just move them over to the suffix field because it doesn't negatively impact your experience. People really do get creative with their trees on Ancestry.com. They're looking for ways to help them identify pieces of information for a particular person. And I can't blame them. When you know someone's adopted, you want to flag that to yourself. Well, don't put it in the name field. Use my tree tags. Or there's also relationship fields that you can use on platform. And if you haven't used those before, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about that in the future. Other things that aren't helpful on the platform is when you put no issue, no children, anonymous, no name, just leave it blank. It's okay to have a blank name for a child who was not named when they were born because they were still born. And if a couple did not have children, there's a better way to identify that they didn't. So Ancestry has introduced something called My Tree Tags. And you will see these tree tags appear when you're searching on the pedigree view of the website. And then you click on somebody's name and this little pop-up shows up. And there you have My Tree Tags. It will also show up on a person page, which I will be showing you in just a moment. By using my tree tags, you can label people with the facts that you're trying to remember without negatively impacting the search and the automatic hinting that Ancestry wants to provide you. Once you get the hang of my tree tags, you can stop putting all of these graphics onto your tree. Get the hang of me, my tree tags, and you can do one thing that you cannot do by adding graphics, and that is filter your tree. Because wouldn't it be great for all of those immigrant ancestors that you're looking for, that you can go to that tag and see all of the names of the people on your tree who are your immigrant ancestors. 
If you're also trying to find the end of the line or find your direct ancestor, you can have that tag on a profile and then you can use this filter to get to just those direct answers, ancestors. So how do you add a tag to a person on ancestry.com? Well, you can get access tags in two of the most common ways you're going to use the platform. From a tree view, either pedigree or descendancy view, or from a profile page. So let me show you how to add a tag when you're working on a pedigree chart or the descendancy chart. So here I am using a tree and I, let's say I want to add a tag to this person right here, Richard Kevin. So one of the things I need to do is click on Richard Kevin. So after I click on the image for Richard S. Kevin, I get this little pop up. The next thing you need to do is click on the tools that are crossed like this, a hammer and a wrench. Click on that and then a pop-up will appear on the right hand side after, after you hit tag. So you will have a pop-up column come on the right side of your screen and this is your workspace. And in your workspace, you have the opportunity to use a number of tags. Now, I'm not gonna cover what all of the tag means and how you should use them in this video. I'm just gonna walk through the process of tagging someone. So the first thing I want to do with Richard S. Kevin is add that I'm actively researching that person. So now all you have to do is just click on that name. There you go, actively researching. And so now I have one status for him. Another tag that I can add is that he was an immigrant. And there you have it. I now have two tags. So let's see what it looks like in the pop-up for Richard. Notice I have his name and his profile and now I have two of my tree tags. When I expand that open, ha, it's going a little crazy, open, there are the two tags. Now you can add up to 20 tags for your individual. Now the other way to add a tag to an individual is to go to their profile page. It's the profile of them. And if you will notice, you have the tag spot right here, right here. <laughs> so all you have to do is click on that blue tag button. I know that Richard Quick Kevin was in the military, so I can go ahead and add that to his profile. Now, one of the things I can do is create a custom tag. I know that Richard served in the Navy. In fact, I know I've been on his ship, the USS Stewart. So I can add Navy to the custom tag. So now not only is going to be tagged as military, which is a universal tag, but I also have Navy, which is a little more specific. Click create, and now you have the second tag. If you ever decide that you don't want to have a tag, maybe only one person uses it, or it really didn't mean what you want it to mean, you can click on the three dots next to the tag and then click on delete tag, just like this. We'll ask you if you're okay doing that because if you have that tag to more than one individual, it will come off of all of those trees. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I can always create it again later. Now here's the magic. Whether you're on a profile page, a predatory chart, or the descendancy chart, if you click on tree search, then the right panel pop-up will show up once again. Now you can use the tree search to quickly go to a relative. Let's say you wanted to look at Thornton, Thornton somebody named Thornton, Thornton Sparks, and then I can click on Thornton Sparks and then away I go. But the beauty of this tree search is this is where you can also filter to your my tree tags. Let's say I want to find all of my immigrant ancestors that I have labeled in my tree. I can click on immigrants and then done. And right now I've only labeled one. Now, if I want to look at my brick walls, I can also go down there and look at my brick walls, click on brick walls, and then click done. And now you see that I have three names. I have that Anna Margaveta, John Townley, and John Sexton. 
Can you use multiple filters? Well, absolutely. So now I'm going to click Immigrant and then Filter. And now you see that I have just Ana Margareta again. So if you start adding tree tags to all of the people in your tree, you're going to be able to use combinations of those labels to get a shorter and shorter list or a more expansive list. There are some functionality that it doesn't have and it might never have in the future. One functionality is the ability to filter to your results and then print off a list of the people that fit immigrants, brick wall ancestors. You can't really do that. The other thing that you can't do with my tree tags yet is to use a third party genealogy software program to download your tags to that program like Family Tree Maker or Roots Magic. You can also at this time not put a my tree tag in Roots Magic or Family Tree Maker and then add it to your ancestry tree. Now in the future, I really hope searching other people's trees becomes easier, but right now it's a little bit difficult. So when you go to somebody's profile page, in this case, Samuel Curtis Brown, you can click on the tree search. After I click on tree search, the sidebar pops out again and I can use these filters, click on them, look for immigrant ancestor or actively researching and see what this person is tagging on their tree. You cannot tell when other people are using my tree tags simply by using a profile page. And if you don't see any tags underneath the person's name, assume that they don't use tags. So it would be nice if Ancestry told you that they were. But let's go ahead and search some filter, some result on someone's tree that I know that they're using tree tags and show you what that's like. So yes, you can, if they're using tree tags, you can search someone else's tree for their tags. And so I'm just gonna do actively researching, click on done, and then here are several of the people that this person is researching. And notice they're using decorations on their names. This is in the suffix field and it doesn't negatively impact anybody's tree. So if you're going to decorate your tree, put the information in the suffix field. So the question you might be asking yourself is, wait a minute, who can view my tree tags and who can research my tree tags? Well, if you have a public tree, like the one I showed you with Eliza, anybody can view those tags that you use. Now, Eliza doesn't have any yet, but other people in that tree that that researcher has tagged is now available. If you have a private tree, either private or private searchable, doesn't really matter. The only people who can see your tags are yourself and the people you've invited to collaborate with that tree. So your tags aren't publicly available. If you tag anybody who is living, no one sees your tags, regardless if your, your tree is public or private. So what are some of the drawbacks of using my tree tags? Well, first, it's time consuming. And the larger your tree, the more challenging it will be to start implementing tree tags. I guess you're just gonna have to put on a, uh, a marathon of your favorite movies or music or podcasts and start tagging. The other drawback, like I mentioned earlier, you can't export the tags, which means you can't import the tags. And you cannot quickly see who is using these tags. So those are some of the drawbacks to be aware of. The other thing is you can't quickly tag people. You can't bulk tag a lot of people right now. Maybe it'll come in the future if we start harassing Ancestry about it, saying, yeah, I like your tree tags, but it's really time consuming. I just like to click 10 people and label them all immigrants and be done with it. And for those of you who would like to have a report and use that as an additional tool for researching, you can't print off a filtered search list. So in the comments below, I want to have a discussion. What do you think about my tree tags? Are you really offended that I say stop calling your ancestor a flag, a flower, or a tree? It's okay. Just be nice about it. 
but let's have a discussion. What do you think about them? Are you using them? What are the questions you have about my tree tags? Thanks so much for watching and be sure to check out some of the other videos that we're going to have pop up here. And as always, subscribe, like, comment, and share this video so it can reach more viewers and help other researchers just like you.